Right, so this is a second one of the October set, and we're looking at some skyscrapers. We've got some people in the foreground, and I'm not sure what this is. is it a flood drain or something like that? It certainly looks like something you don't want to fall off. There's a ladder there. Um, so as a photograph, I'm, uh, that's too close to the edge for my liking. And that's poking through. So I think let's let's get a bit savage with the crop tool and see if we can just make a shot that doesn't include those. We're going to do it with a very tall, thin one. Is that vertical? If you want to make something vertical, quick click your crop tool and then this angle straighten tool here is your friend. And then let's find something you know to be vertical. I think this is actually bent, is this tower. It's got one of those um, curved fronts. But there you go. So let's just see what that looks like. Um, obviously the great thing about Lightroom over Photoshop is it's non-destructive. So you can just crop away, try go back later if you want to I mean I'm always a bit dubious about having half buildings in or buildings too close to so I'm just rotating it by accident too close to the edge you know it, that that feels right with that gap there that feels wrong with that gap being almost non-existent so when you shoot you know, always always try to do, just zoom out if you if you're unsure zoom out wider and then you can crop in later. It's a, it's not something I recommend you do for everything, but if you're unsure, it's better to do that than to be in this position where you've got like a building right on the edge. So uh, um, we've got this woman at the bottom. I know she's so she's a nice anchor for us. Um, or we could even crop out to there. Yeah, I, th I think having the people just sells that bit of interest. I don't even know where it is. Is it Central Park or somewhere like that? Oh, Seaside. Right, anyway, back to the editing. So, let's try and get a little bit of detail in the sky. So we've got that cloud by dragging the highlights down. Let's put a lot of clarity on. Should we open the shadows all the way up? We'll do this technique. Alt key on the blacks. Drag the blacks to the left until you get some black clipping. Alt key of the whites to the right so you get some clipping so it's just poking through in the cloud there so all of a sudden just with three or four little tweaks on the um, exposure area there the basics you've got quite a punchy looking shot what do you want, what about white balance um, it says I shot there let's try daylight so that's a bit bluer if we go for shade that will go a bit warmer look if we go for Tungsten, get a bright blue shot. Um, fluorescent can be a bit greeny, weird. I reckon that day might benefit from uh, cloudy or daylight. Daylight's a bit cooler. Right. So let's just bring a bit of sharpening on. I'm going to add the masking. I don't want to sharpen the sky. So you press your Alt key down and drag your masking along. And anything that's being sharpens white, anything that's not being sharpens black. And if we get in real close, let's see if there's any noise going on. So it's a little bit grainy in those places. So let's just pull the detail back. That removes quite a lot of the grain. And to get rid of it completely, you can just add a little bit of luminance. Uh, noise reduction. Not a lot because it starts to pull detail away from things. Um, Nope, still doesn't know the uh, the lens or camera, so I can't tell you what. Yeah, you know, it's not going to do the distortion removal. Um, big nets on clear blue skies don't tend to work. I'll show you why. Look at that. <laughs> that looks weird. <laughs> so I'd leave that alone as well. Um, so that's probably the edit I'd do. But one thing that always looks good with architecture is, well, it's always worth trying. Is a black and white. And so you just create that duplicate, so create a virtual copy. Go back to your HSL color BW, click on black and white, and then you 
click on the picker here. So if you wanted the sky to be a bit darker, it's a very blue shot, remember. You can drag that down a bit and make the, the trees really bright. Actually, the building and the sky are very, very blue in tone because the sky is being reflected in the windows, isn't it? So oh, I'm going to just tweak around, make the whites a bit whiter, maybe bring the clarity down a bit. And then finally, just let's get an ellipse tool just to go over the main building. Click Invert Mask. If that's checked, the inside of the um, ellipse is what gets edited. Ooh, the other one's just cooked. Um, wasn't expecting that to pop up then. <laughs> That's the previous video which I'm just uploading. Okay. So all I'm doing there is just adding a, a few little tweaks just to make the building stand out a little bit more. Uh, close that. And if you want, the blacks make quite a big difference in the black and white, as do the whites, of course. So you could do something like that. So let's do a create virtual copy just to see where we started from. So we started off with that. That was a color shot and that's a black and white. So uh, yeah, main thing is probably the crop when you're shooting. If you're shooting buildings and you're a bit unsure, shoot wider and then you can crop in. Otherwise, you end up having to fairly you know, do some savage butchery afterwards. Okay, cheers for watching.